Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome back to my monthly show, State of Science Fiction. Uh, you know, it's funny. Um, I I was ac I actually invited Matt from Matt on Books to the show, and mm -hmm. he's like, "Man, that would be fun." But you know who you should really talk to? Whitney from <laughs> The Secret Sauce of Storytelling. I'm here with Whitney from The Secret Sauce of Storytelling. How are you today? <laughs> I'm I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. Um, but yeah, what what? So, state of science fiction is about well, state of science fiction. I wanted to um talk about the genre, and I don't I don't, don't want to I don't mean like well, just what we think about. It, I guess. Uh oh, it sounds like there could be a lot of controversial topics. So you're gonna have to narrow it down for me just a little bit. Um, you know, just, well, I, I called it the state of science fiction because, um, you know, I, I've noticed on, on the booktube sphere that, or well, I, I, it's kind of, it's more like a marketing thing, I guess, that okay. like science fiction and fantasy are, and this has always been kind of a, a thing, so I won't pretend this is new, but, um, I feel like science fiction's losing its identity a little bit. <laughs> okay. That's a hot take. Tell me about that. You know, I see stuff like, um, oh man, uh, the Sun Eater books, mm -hmm. and it's kind of marketed the same way as like Game of Thrones or fantasy or something. I don't know, right? And I'm like, and I'm like well, okay, it, it, and it made me wonder. I'm like, so what is the distinction of of science fiction and and fantasy? So oh man, kinda, so you want definitions, huh? So, so that's kind of so that's kind of what inspired the show, and also I wanted to talk with people about it because, like, if I had just made a video rambling about it, like I did about fantasy the other day, um, cute little puppy, um, then um, I, I, I just I don't know if it would have uh, quite. I, I wanted to hear other voices, and y you're one of the YouTube people, YouTubers who primarily talks about science fiction like you talk like octavia butler mm -hmm. and ray bradbury and i think you talked about ray bradbury haven't you oh we yeah a, we had a we had a podcast a few months ago so i'm, I'm kind of yeah kind of hazy uh, no um i do do primarily science fiction because to be honest i used to watch a lot of booktube and I think there's a lot of people in the fantasy realm, so that's kind of why I got into science fiction, because I'm a huge fan of that as well. Um, as far as the definitions go, I mean, I think that, you know, I, I think you treat have to treat each individual piece as its own thing, because ultimately the definition doesn't quite matter as much unless you know, you're a marketer or you have to put the book on the shelf. Um, a lot of people define science fiction as something that can actually happen, something that's dealing with science and technology, whereas sure. fantasy is something that's usually involving magic or things that do not have scientific explanation. And that's probably the most basic of definitions, especially because in early science fiction, uh, a lot of strong science fiction writers like let's even take arthur c clark he wrote a book called childhood's end that almost everybody fantastic knows book. about <laughs> and fantastic is a great book um but he wrote this book and in it are people who have evolved to develop psych psychic powers mm -hmm. like telepathy was considered especially at the early stages of science fiction as something that was feasible and possible in early science fiction so does that mean that those were fantasy books now? Or do they still count as pulp sci-fi? And you can see how the, the lines begin to blur. Oh, yeah. And then we got stuff like the New Wave, which just completely torpedoed any definitions. Because <laughs> they're right. like, we're going to do whatever we want, and you're just going to like it. And, and we do. Just and we do like, like it. You know? <laughs> and, you know, like J.G. Ballard and... and uh, Thomas Dish, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I haven't read, I've wanted to read his books, but I haven't. Um, well, well, J.G. Ballard stuff is feasible. Like, it's potentially possible. Oh, yeah, but... I think High Rise is fantastic in, in terms mm -hmm. of, it's an interesting one. 
Yeah. Well, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of gray area and there's a lot of authors that defy boundary and definition. So I think that's why it's so hard and such a hot take to define sci-fi, especially when I hear people say that science fiction is a dying genre. Ooh. Ooh that's yeah. A, that's, a, that's a take. I know. I, I, <laughs> I think that's why Matt on Books recommended me for your show because we uh, we've had many discussions about it uh, off camera. So, well, I mean, I, I I have some questions here, and I mean, I might I might cut back to this um to this okay. topic, but I guess the first question I have for you, and this is in your very subjective opinion, what makes a great science fiction story? Like like what like what tickles your feather as a science fiction fan? So, so me personally, or just in general? You could say both. You know, I'm not, I'm not, okay. dis, I'm not making distinctions here. All right. Well, in general, I would say any book that connects with a reader is a great science fiction book. Objectively. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you want to get subjectively, I am a big ideas girl. I want to see the author play with ideas that I either haven't encountered before or do something new with ideas that I have already heard about, but it's a fresh take. Um, nobody has to be 100% original, and I always really enjoy those books that are thought experiments or play with things in ways that really make me stop and think and look around the world and see something slightly different or slightly new that I haven't seen before. That, that's a that's a that's a decent answer you know i mean it's it, in it's kind of that's another reason i kind of started this this channel not this channel this show is mm -hmm. um i i you know i read science fiction and there's sometimes i get kind of frustrated with it because i'm like there's some of those science fiction writers and it's kind of funny because we sort of talked about this when we had our podcast episode and i'm like let's save this for when we get on the <laughs> state of science fiction because there's some, you know, science fiction where it just feels like it's all about the ideas, which mm -hmm. isn't entirely a bad thing. I mean, I like Childhood's End, and I don't mm -hmm. think anyone would say that's a particularly character-driven story, at least in my opinion. Yeah. There might be some people who nah. try and pull something out of their, out of their ass, but I, I haven't seen it yet. I enjoy that book immensely, but, you know, it, it's weird. It's weird. But I find a great science fiction story to me should well i hate to say be speculative in nature because well that's what a lot of fiction does <laughs> as, as a friend of mine pointed out to me mm -hmm. the other day um but i find more i guess i'm i'm more intrigued by how does the few because i'm quite fascinated by the future what is it gonna look like what how will people react to it and i guess that's why i like childhood's end a lot because it's like what if this thing happened how would people react to it um one of I the beautiful i think that's what makes science fiction tick at least the great stuff anyway i i would also go one step further than you did and say even things that we know aren't possible but the author still plays with the idea and says if these were the rules what would it look like i still find those ideas and those books to be really fun yeah i mean it's, it's weird because science fiction is has an interesting history with a lot of strange characters um, there's this book called Astounding that I've been wanting to read for a very long time, which is about the kind of golden age and all the strange personalities that came from that period, like um, Robert Heinlein, mm -hmm. um, Isaac Asimov, Arthur C. Clarke, um, James Tiptree Jr., real name Alice Sheldon. Um, there's a lot of interesting people in science fiction, from what I've learned anyway. Yeah, I think that people come to fantasy and science fiction for different reasons. And I yeah. think those reasons can overlap. But I think ultimately that's where people are either on the spectrum, they end up either a science fiction or a fantasy person. And then they tend to, to lean harder on one side or the other because they come for different reasons. I, I guess with science fiction, I want to be engaged intellectually and emotionally. If that makes sense. 
Yep, I would agree. Because, you know, I mean, at Childhood's End, I was kind of, I had to put the book down and think for a while, because it's a, um, or The Martian Chronicles, which is, mm, again, that's kind of the tough thing with science fiction. Sometimes, well, with genre fiction, sometimes you can kind of blur the lines. I mean, then there's people like Octavia Butler, who just completely nuke them. <laughs> I mean, I read Kindred not too long ago, and I don't know if that's really a, a science fiction story. She herself described it as a fantasy, which, you know, I think you could get away with. But, I mean, it's a time travel story. Well, but it, 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 what I think is really interesting about it is, while technically time travel is a part of that story, it's not about time travel. No. It's about a woman's emotional reaction to the situation that she wouldn't find herself in in any other way other than this magical slash scientific explanation. So it's playing with an idea of something that even may not be able to happen, but it, if the rules of this universe exist, what would it look like? And those are the books that I love so much. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, I found that Kindred really tickled the the golden zone for me on on what good speculative fiction should do, whatever the hell that phrase even means nowadays. But um, because you know, there's some authors who are like I don't write science fiction, you know. Uh, <laughs> I, I think a lot you of look that kind came... of annoyed. <laughs> I know. I, I think a lot of that came from some of the previous history and I can't be mad about it because they got to experience it, especially um, for the writers who are a little bit older, they experienced, um, I guess the branding of science fiction was like a dirty term and the books wouldn't sell if they got branded as science fiction, which is too bad. Um, and I think we still see some lingering hesitance um, of that in readers today even, but I, I just, I don't think that that is something that's going to be carried forward in the future. No, I think... we're, we're kind of in a, and also another reason why I started this, this show anyway, is because I feel like science fiction's in kind of a weird spot right now. Like we don't, like we're not really sure, because we're kind of in the future now. You know, we got these, you know, the, the stuff that like Asimov and Heinlein and Clark were talking about freaking 50 years ago some of that stuff has come to come true now you know mm -hmm. and it's and, you know it's crazy um or if you want to go through the new wave or you know i, I won't get into that nerd i'll try not to be too too nerdy on this on this episode well i really like that science fiction follows innovation so if you think about it its peak was really when we started seeing huge jumps forward in technology and science. Even things not just like the space race or reaching the moon, but also things like discovering and being able to figure out human DNA and mm -hmm. really understanding the science of psychology that's reflected in science fiction like we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. What about like, and I think that a lot of the scientific advancements with the computers and things like that are very visible in society. Whereas now I think a lot of people forget that we're still advancing. Technology is still happening. It's just a lot more quiet and subtle now. Things like social media, things like AI. And it's, I mean, right? I, yeah, I, absolutely. I have, I, have, I have issues with the term AI because it's not technically an AI. It's still a machine <laughs> doing a function. But I won't go into that. That's a different conversation. <laughs> well, it is It is kind of, but it, it isn't, I guess. It's just about, like, you know, what computers are capable of doing. It's not reinventing or the fact that computers exist now suddenly or the fact that our entire lives are on our cell phones now or the fact that social media and dating has changed forever, right? Those are things that have finally come and gone, and now we're seeing a lot more... I guess, more subtle changes. I think that makes it harder for some of the science fiction writers today, or maybe easier, I guess, depending. Yeah, I, I, I suppose, I suppose you're right, but it's been, it's been kind of, um, I mean, you know, you could either kind of go in that, um, Andy Weir direction where it's kind of a throwback to like, you know, Heinlein or, you know, Isaac Asimov. Well, 
depending on uh. what you think, where it's sort of about, you know, science and competent man stuff. and Or you can go like the Jeff Vandermeer route, where it's just, here's some weirdness. There you go. Where are we going to well, be in the future? You know? I, I, would, I would argue that I think Andy Weir is... I really liked all of his stuff. Every book he wrote, I like really enjoyed it. But sci- that kind of science fiction is more made for the masses. It's made for consumption. It's made for entertainment. It's made for escapism. Are you one of those a little tiny bit of science in there? Are, are you one of Are you one of those sci-fi fans who gets kind of excuse me? Um, are you one of those who gets kind of miffed when you see like Blake Crouch, you know, making the rounds on YouTube? <laughs> I guess I haven't really seen him making the rounds no. on YouTube, so I wouldn't. I don't know the controversy there. Because it's again, it's kind of because again, sci-fi is kind of in a weird spot right now. You know, mm-hmm. where it's either like these kind of popcorn sci-fi, where it's like this really serious, you know, idea-driven. You know, I haven't read like the Three Body Problem or anything like that, but um, you know. <laughs> Again, I'm, I think science fiction's in a weird spot right now. <laughs> That's why I started this, to hear other people's opinions. So what do you think? you think science fiction's in a weird spot right now? Well, you already kind of answered that, but... Yeah, I kind of did. I, I kind of don't think it's in a weird spot. I just think it's transitions to being more subtle. And I also think that in every genre, there's always going to be books for the hardcore fans of whatever genre it is Mm -hmm. and then there's also going to be entry level books or Mm -hmm. books that are crossovers um and i'm gonna i'm gonna use a phrase here that is silly but i don't know i guess i'm coining this maybe i'll do a video on it at some point but i'm gonna call it the sci-fi like food pyramid right like you have like the the solid structure of carbs i'll I'll watch that (laughs) And the, the, like, your typical diet that's supposed to be mostly carbs is going to be your general science fiction for everyone. The, the stuff that the masses are going to be very accessible for. And as you go through the genre, you get more and more deep into the science and the ideas and the possibilities. And so you don't start at the top, you start at the bottom. I, I guess that kind of leads me to the second question here is, and you kind of were talking about this, but if you'd like to expand on it a little more, what do you find so compelling about science fiction as a genre in comparison to other ones? <laughs> well, for me, it's the challenge and the rigid rules because fantasy can challenge me. I've read a lot of books in fantasy that actually can challenge me just as much as science fiction, but those authors are allowed the sky's the limit and you don't have to necessarily explain it because it can be magic. Um, Whereas in science fiction, you have these rigid lanes that you have to stay in. And so if you want something really fantastical to happen, there has to be a really intense defining explanation for it. And I like the idea of those those rigid structures and seeing what people can create within the boundaries of that wall. So, so you like more like hard science fiction or are you just kind of all over the spectrum? I'm all over the spectrum depending on my mood. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you know, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but again, I, I find that where we as a species will be in the future or how we react to certain, you know, if like we brought a human back to life, you know, uh, like, Frankenstein or you know um what would it be like if we colonized Mars or you know um stuff like that I I find quite that's what I find it's hard because and that's why I like hearing other people talk about what they find so compelling because um it's a broad question well I I agree with your answer I think that we always find ourselves the most interesting I mean isn't that kind of what selfish species (laughs) I I believe but how can we be other if there isn't if we don't know what else is out there right how can we be focused on them if we haven't found them so have you ever have you ever thought about like you know what if if alien which i mean there has to be other life forms out there it would be kind of silly to think there isn't at least i seriously i i would think there are um, other species out there, but you think they just haven't shown up yet because they think we're idiots? 
Oh, man, you have to read the three-body problem. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll have to. Yeah, it actually was a show. It actually just turned into a show recently. I know. Uh, D&D I actually... Turned. Huh? Oh, um, the showrunners, they did Game of Thrones. Now they're doing three-body problem. Yeah. Yeah, I watched the first episode, actually, and um, I'm working on a video on it right now, so. All right. I mean... It's it's kind of tough because, you know, like science fiction, despite the fact it should be a, a very rigid genre, like you were saying, like there's a lot of there's a lot of avenues you can take, you know, like you can talk about the future and, you know, where we'll be at as a species and talk about, you know, governments that are sucky or maybe governments that are pretty nice. Uh, you know, I, I haven't read the dispossessed or anything like that yet i want to though um well there's a, there's a lot of avenues because you could have I know. <laughs> like not just... not just dystopias but you could talk about technology you could talk about the impact that these things have on humans you can talk about like beyond just what societies look like you can talk about what how that affects future societies or future interactions and therefore it reflects back on us today i mean there's just so many ways to make us look at and change our perspective on where we are today and what's happened in the past everything seems to repeat in some small way or you know you could do something like hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy which is just absolutely ridiculous and i love it so there you go <laughs> everyone's like oh terry pratchett no man douglas adams take that yeah. no i'm kidding um i, I still need to read terry pratchett but anyway um but yeah no it's it's weird because y you wonder where we're going to be at and there's also i think there's a lot of great um existential and philosophical inquiries about humanity that can be explored through science fiction that we might not be able to explore in other genres as well and I, I, I have an interest in those things. I don't know if you do, but um, that's also what I, I find compelling about science fiction. Well, I think that's the definition of science fiction. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's good. I'm, I'm glad you think that because, like, I didn't want to start, like, going off on, like, oh, you know, are, is humanity even worth it? And you're just being like, whoa, dude, calm down. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, you have to read the three body problem. You just, you just kind of went through a long, long line of the plot in that story. Oh, I guess I'll have to. I, the main gripe I've heard about that series is that uh, the characterization's a bit flat. But you know, and I would also, say that is an understatement. The also the 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 author is not a great guy, but you know, I've 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 read books from jackasses in the past, so I mean, you know. I survived reading Terry Goodkind. I think I'll live. Well, I don't know. I don't know much about the author. Um, and I would honestly, I don't know. He's from China. So we don't know what kind of pressure is happening from the background or whose family is being threatened based off of what he does or does <laughs> not say. So I, uh, I don't know that I, uh, I judge him for some of those things. Well, sure. I'm not, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to get into that point is i've heard the characterization is pretty flat in that book in it's very books. true it's not a book that you would read because you want beautiful prose or you want a character connection it's something that you would read almost exclusively for the ideas because it, even chapter by chapter if you look at it, it doesn't really connect very well it's very clunky well, why why should I read it then? <laughs> you seem kind if of. If you want the ideas, that's why you read it. Well, you know, like I said, I've I've read Childhood's End, so it's not like I'm one of those who goes like ah, because like here's some here's a pet peeve of mine when um when people go they're like a character first reader, because you know I've 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 tried doing that before, and then I read a book where. Maybe characterization isn't quite on the forefront, and I loved it, so. I think it really depends on the author's skill. But I like strong characters, though. Like, that's a big right. part for me, you know? Like, right. I, I, well, that's... 
a lot of it depends on what the reader is bringing to the table when they're opening the book, right? I like science fiction with strong characters and great ideas. <laughs> well, you know. You, you want to have your cake and eat it, too. I get it. We all do. I, I, I hear you. But, you know, it, but then mm-hmm. there's something like Childhood's In or, you know, well, iRobot to some lesser extent, I guess. I, I do love iRobot a lot. Have you read The Foundation no, trilogy? No, I have not. Um, Britain, what are you doing with your life right now? You need to go read that. Well, I hold on. Let me think. I know of it, but I haven't read it. I haven't actually sat down and read. I know what it's about, though. Okay, stop everything. We're gonna change the show. We're gonna be. <laughs> we're gonna have the Britain show of why which foundation book should we read next? Somebody save this man. That's. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. I I guess I like the. Yeah, I guess it's a good way to put it. I like the cake, and I like to eat it as well. But then yep. again, I already ate the cake, so I don't yep. really get that analogy. But I digress. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, it's, it's, I guess I like, I like seeing people dealing with the future in some way or another. I don't know. I might be speaking nonsense. I don't know. I think if it's your opinion, you can't speak really nonsense, right? It's just an opinion. Um, and everyone is entitled to theirs. Welcome to the internet, right? <laughs> well, there, there's some people who just spew it out and don't care. So, I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, well, so, so, I mean, I think you have to go further than just the future. I think you have to talk about, do you like society? Do you like technology? Do you like first contact? Do you like space battles? Do you like what aspect I, of I, the future? I, I like, I like all that. <laughs> That's the thing. I like a lot of those things. Well, so, space battles. Um, mm-hmm. I, I do like those, but you know, I, I got star Wars and you know, I got, I got my fix of that. <laughs> well, Good Star Wars, anyway. There, there, there's there's some not great stuff out there. Oh, yeah. I have some opinions on that. Let's talk about how Disney ruined Star Wars. I would love to talk about that. <laughs> anyway, I won't get into that. That's a, <laughs> that's a discussion for another time. Oh. But um, all, and, and also, Star Wars is fantasy, but I digress. Um, <laughs> um, well, Star Wars is space opera, that's which true. is also what the Sun Eater series is. It's that's also true. space opera. There's li- huh? I literally saw a, 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 a cover that they were putting out, mm-hmm. which, speaking of that, I would love to have, like, I've not read any of Christopher Rocchio's books. I don't know if he would talk to me, but I would love to have him on this show and hear his thoughts, because, you know, his book actually, his books were one of the things that inspired me to start this in some way, so, even though I, I haven't read them, just like their impact, I guess, is what inspired me. Well, I would say, I mean, he seems to be making the rounds on a lot of booktube channels. Um, I would say that you would be able to probably invite him, but it would probably be a best courtesy to at least try book one. Before yeah, you do that. that's that's what I'm thinking, because I'm like, hey, I haven't read your book, though, but you want to come on my sci-fi show? That would be yeah. kind of weird. I, I would probably be like, go read my book first, at least. But, yeah. um... I, I, you would probably like it. I really do think that you would. I, I've read the first one, and I liked it. So I, it's it's. I guess what interests compels me to science fiction is. I like, well, a lot of well. I mean, you know that there's another quite that's kind of my next question, which is about favorite tropes, but just kind of the. I'll try and make this simple because it's something I've given a lot of thought about. I like seeing how stuff like society or technology, how people would react to that, you know. You like the psychology aspect of it. That's great. Yes, Yes. exactly. Yes, that's right. So I have a better question for you. Am I allowed to ask a question? No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You okay. Ask okay. Me. So my question is bouncing off of this idea. Um, so you're asking what you like the most about science fiction. And we've answered that a couple times. But what do you think people, what do you and what do you think people in general dislike or turns them off from science fiction? 
What do I think turns them off? And what specifically makes you turn away from certain science fiction? Uh, well, for one, I, I, you know, I actually read, um, I read story of, I read stories of your life, the Ted Chiang collection. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, I'm familiar with that one. Um, I liked it. I mean, it didn't mm -hmm. blow me away, as some people said. It w there were some great stories in there, though. Like, I really liked Hell is the Absence of God and Story of Your Life. I'm getting off topic. Um, what do I think turns people away? I think people have the idea that science fiction might be a little boring. Okay. Either that, or they just look at something like Star Wars, or... Oh, uh, what's another popular? Doom or and think that's all it is as a as a genre really and i mean you know i mean i have my thoughts on dune and you know but uh or you know they'll see something like um i don't know i, I don't know like they'll see like the popular stuff and they'll think like maybe that's all science fiction is i think that might turn some people away um or if they're interested in reading like older stuff which is more about the ideas, I think that might turn some people away who are more modern readers. I mean, I've read, I, I've watched, like, people like um, Matt on Books kind of, it might be a video I might do in the in the future about um, older books, but I think that sometimes science fiction's fixation on ideas might alienate people who look for things that are different or look for a more, like, oh, these characters, they're so... You know, oh, you know, I, and, you know, or whatever, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just bullshitting here. Um. So you would think that it would be, like, uh, boring because of all the technical explanation, and yeah. then also um, maybe um, isn't quite as popular because it doesn't always have all of the connective escapism elements that are present in so many other genres. Yeah. Is that what you're a, saying? To, or to, to an extent, though, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like I'm being snobbish here. It's just, um, I don't know. It, it's like, it's like people, there's some people who don't want to allow themselves to think more cerebral be more cerebral about about storytelling i would agree and that's I think, something that's oh. frustrated me mm -hmm. as i've gone on booktube and i've I, i've seen discourse around books in general i think that's just something that's frustrated me yeah, I think a couple of my friends or my family members who make fun of me for reading science fiction tell me that they don't want their hobby to feel like homework. That's what my sister tells me all the time. Well, yeah, and I, I get that. I mean, it's kind of funny. Like, I'm not like a science guy in general. I just like, I just like science fiction. I like this, and like I said, I like the psychological aspects of it. You know, I like mm -hmm. seeing how people. I like childhood end. I like childhood's end a lot because. You know, the idea that, you know, yeah, these aliens show up, but it's our distrustful nature. It's our it's our fear of the unknown is eventually what kind of turns it sideways. I had a different take on that book. Um, I thought the most interesting aspect was this idea of generational memory and what the aliens looked like yeah. showing up in our religious aspects and how we we somehow remembered the future as as a species that yeah, was that, such an interesting idea yeah no it's it's um but what turns people away um i think there's just people who don't want to take science fiction at its level who don't want to meet it at its level and that's fine i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but you know i i think it's because like you mentioned in our definition discussion, it's because sci-fi is so varied as well. Like you can find books that read like textbooks that are nothing but ideas, but you can also find soft science fiction books that are all about the characters. And you can also find dystopian books that are really all about philosophy or, you know, like there's so much to be had that I think a lot of people end up getting turned away because they didn't get started in the right niche or trope or sure, like, subsection. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I don't see, um, I don't see like Matt's 
fantasy book reviews enjoying something like um like childhood's end or something like that i was kind of surprised mike liked childhood childhood's end as much as as much as he did but i digress we're bringing up that a lot (laughs) it's a great book everyone should go Mm -hmm. read that um uh, I guess that leads to my next question. What are some of your favorite tropes in science fiction? The ones where uh, you might—I think you might have made a video about this, didn't you, or something? I—I I haven't yet. Um, my problem is I really enjoy many, many, many different tropes in science fiction. Um, so I, I guess I cycle through can, them over time because name I'm a such couple a couple. If you want, you don't have to go through all of them. <laughs> Um, I, I'm actually working right now on making a video on one of my, I think most underrated tropes of science fiction, and that is, uh, military science fiction. Hmm. Yeah. I know. I, I, I do like Starship Troopers a lot. I admittedly, I haven't read a lot of other, uh, military science fiction. It makes me kind of sad, but (sighs) Well, I would highly recommend The Forever War if you have not read it. Yeah, I've, I've thought about trying that one, but... um, If you like Starship Troopers, you have to. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out eventually, but I'm, I'm afraid that maybe, like, eh. Eh, yeah, I'll, it, it's on my list, for sure. No, no, you have to finish that sentence. What are you afraid of about about Forever War? Tell well, me. Well, there, there's some science fiction books I've read that are very much of the time and you're like oh boy this is very much of that time Mm -hmm. um i'm hoping forever war is not one of those well i have definitely started it although i have not finished it and i can tell you so far it doesn't seem to be one of those well that's good i'll have to check it out then um i uh or, oh, oh, yeah, you, you were talking about... I, I mean, I'll, I'll just name some I enjoy. Um, mm-hmm. You know, for example, if you want something to think about. I mean, I like parallel universes a lot. Because, I don't know, the idea of causality kind of fascinates me. Like, what have if... You I, read, uh, have you read uh, Space Between Worlds? No. I have read uh, Man in the High Castle, which is all about that. Which I... Didn't you not like that one? I super disagree. That book isn't about anything. I really hate that book. (laughs) That book has no purpose and doesn't really have an ending that makes sense. (laughs) You would cry on drugs and it makes no sense. I'm super, super anti that book. I would burn it if I could. Yeah, I I, I mean, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, save my Philip K. Dick love for, you know, a little later on. But um, I, I like parallel universes and causality, I guess. I'm really picky about time travel because time travel gets complicated really quickly. Um, so does parallel universes. That's true, but I love it. I just I love parallel. I like the idea that there might be another me who made different choices than I did. You know, or oh, AI. I love AI. I just and it's really cool that AI is actually becoming a thing now. And I thought you just said you had thoughts about how it wasn't AI. Well, you're you're going back and forth. I'm so confused. <laughs> we're seeing the start of it. I'm not saying we're there, but I love the. Uh, but um, you know, just I I like. Also, AI is just a great way to kind of just go in the themes I'm interested in. Like, what does it mean to be human? Why is a human being a human being? Can a robot become a human being? I like that. I love that stuff. Three laws of robotics, like. Give me that all day. <laughs> I will. I will eat it up. Yeah. Um, have you Have you read the Sea of Rust? No. I, I feel so bad now. You're just. You're just like. You're just hammering me with all these sci. I mean, have you read any sci fi besides Childhood's End? Come on. <laughs> I have read Martian Chronicles. Uh-huh. I've read Childhood's End. Uh, okay. Transmetropolitan. Okay. Um, don't Light don't, by don't forget I Robot. Right. I Robot. Uh, M. John Harrison's Light, which I'm a- I actually got a friend of mine to read. Um, most, I haven't uh, read that one, actually. A lot, of, a lot of Ray Bradbury short stories that are science fiction, I've read those, because, man, that mm-hmm. guy was great. Um, v for Vendetta. I've read the Southern Reach trilogy, which I'll talk about in a minute. All right. Um, 
Uh, what else have I read? I, I've read a lot of science fiction. I've also watched... I mean, also I like, you know, The X-Files, which I guess is, is not... It's <laughs> kind of sci-fi. Fringe, Star Trek. Uh, what else have I read? Um, Sounds like you need to... Um... Philip Get K. On. Dick. I love Philip K. Dick a lot. I know you're. I know you're on the Man in the High Castle haterade, but I fucking love his weirdness. He just did not care. That man. I, I don't him. know. I, I. I love him. I feel like he was just high. Like everyone he was. He was for the majority. Meth-induced comas as genius. Although I will say, I was recently proven wrong. I did read a Philip K. Dick that blew me away. Can you guess um, which one it is? How many how many Philip K. Dicks have you read? I've read A Scanner Darkly, which is my favorite. Man in the High Castle. Do Dream Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which is also fantastic. Um I've read his short stories. Some of them anyway. I've read Minority Report. The Hanging Stranger, which is a which isn't really a sci it's kind of a science it's more of a horror story, but it's really really, really good. Um I am hoping to read Ubik in Ubik May. is it. Ubik blew me away. I loved Ubik. Loved. Yeah, and, and the thing is with PKD is, yeah, he was on drugs, and you can tell when the drugs were hitting him pretty hard. And the thing is, like, he didn't... But I think a lot of people misconstrue about him. I think his imagination was just strange, because most of the drugs he took were, like, amphetamines. He didn't take like hallucinogenics or. I mean, amphetamines are pretty hallucinogenic. So are they? Are they? Well, you're a nurse, yeah. so I'm sure you know more than I do. I'm, <laughs> I'm a college student. <laughs> um, what else? Oh man, put me on the spot here. Uh, it's okay, you don't have to list everything ever. I was just well, uh, not, I'm, I'm not listing everything ever, but I'm sure I'm gonna like mm -hmm. snap my finger and be like, oh man, uh, Robert Heinlein stuff. Um, all I, of it? That's I a lot. Of, not a lot. Not all of it. Oh God, no. Um, I've actually purposely avoided his really later stuff after, and I actually unironically like Stranger in a Strange Land. Thomas, if you watch this, he's probably not gonna watch this. Thomas Wagner, if you watch it, you can suck it. Stranger in a Strange Land is a great book. You, you can fight me on that. <laughs> I might be on Thomas's side, although I have to tell you, I I haven't completed it, so I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say anything about it until I actually complete the book. Moon is a harsh mistress. I have a soft spot for, but that's because I, I love Moon is a harsh mistress. Um, and I love it. Troopers, you know. I, I also love Double Star. It was shockingly good. Also read Friday a while ago, but that one's just bizarre. Yeah. Uh and slaughter all right that's, sorry we got off topic here sorry but anyway um another um i i also i i also do like first contact a lot but i also like strange zones like roadside picnic and roadside picnic is an incredibly awesome book that's kind of funny i, I mentioned this in my review of that book i actually like stalker more believe it or not I'm, really yeah. you like silent moments in a field for hours and hours and oh, hours <laughs> that movie went on forever um and southern reach <laughs> trilogy um yeah no i mean also slaughterhouse five i i, I want to reread that book so bad because man and kindred if you want to consider kindred science fiction but you know, anyway, back to tropes. Um, I but yeah, I like First Contact a lot. I like stuff like um, I like I like stuff like weird zones, like in Roadside Picnic. Mm -hmm. I find that kind of fascinating. You might really like uh, Fire Upon the Deep by Werner Vinge. He I'll had some very out. interesting zones. I'll have to check that out. That mm -hmm. sounds like that'll really get me going. <laughs> I think you might be really surprised. It might be a, a awesome book because it has first contact, it has zones, it has interesting AI and technology. Oh my gosh, that sounds like my favorite book ever. Uh, it might be. You should read it. <laughs> um, but yeah, now you you can go. What what are what are some? And, and you can just name a couple. You don't have to name all. Of them. <laughs> you know, you don't have to like. 
really get that. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I can't think of a trope that I, I... It would be easier for me to name tropes that I don't like rather than ones that I do because I really enjoy all of them. It just depends on the mood. Like I mentioned military science fiction. I really like different kinds of first contact because a lot of first contact is actually a reflection or a mirror back at us of how we would handle it. Mm -hmm. And I really yeah. enjoy that, but I also really enjoy, you know, like using it to own our mistakes, using it to look at what we've done in the past um, with different contacts between nations and things like that. Um, I don't know. Let me see. Recently, I read uh, Kim Stanley Robinson's um, Ministry of the Future, and I really enjoyed that one because it plays with governmental politics and what it would really take for us to actually do something about global warming. Mm -hmm. And even though all of his ideas were not 100% accurate, it was such a fun thought experiment. So I would probably give a subtrope to thought experiments of hmm. just could we play around with this idea and see how it would work. I want to read his um, Mars books. Yeah, I've only read Red Mars. Um but all of them are very well decorated, so. Well, I, 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 I guess since we've gone through that, um, I will ask, who are some of the greats of science fiction, in your opinion? And who are some newer science fiction writers that you have really, you know, you're like, man, this guy's the business. Like, he might be the best one. <laughs> no, maybe not that far, but... Um, <sighs> Well, I think you're just asking me for my favorites list because I think everybody has a general gist of who the greats are. Well, I imagine Octavia Butler is on your list because you made a video of that a while ago. Correct. Octavia Butler is one of my all-time faves. Um, obviously, I really like Dan Simmons' Hyperion. I am hopefully going to read that soon. The entire Cantos is phenomenal. I... I can't get over that book. It was amazing. Even though, again, not the best person ever. Yeah. Um, I really liked the original series of Ender's Game, specifically the second book in the series, Speaker for the Dead, one of my all-time favorites. You know, that's, a, that's one of those where I really like the concept, but it feels kind of... And I don't want to sound snobbish here but it's a little ya -y and it's you didn't read speaker for the dead did you no i only read the ender's yeah. game yeah that's because uh speaker for the dead is where it's at i didn't say ender's game was where it's at speaker of the dead oh okay i'll have to check that out i've heard there are some science fiction aficionados <laughs> i've seen on on youtube who are like speaker of the dead is really good so there you go it is it is. I will tell you that he actually wrote Speaker for the Dead first and realized that it's not going to have as strong of an impact if you didn't know what he had done in his past that he needed redemption for so badly. And so he wrote Ender's Game. Yeah, I mean, uh, the twist of that of the of Ender's Game is really good. So, you know. Well, I, I got the same YA vibes that you did from that book, but I'm telling you, it's all about Speaker for the Dead. Uh, I guess I'll have to check that out and see if it changes my mind. Yeah. Um, let's see. You know, obviously there's the big three. Those are, you know, the ones that everybody agrees are fantastic. And I, mm -hmm. I agree. Um, Isaac Asimov, Robert Heinlein, Arthur C. Clarke. Those were fantastic. A lot of people make it the big five instead of the big three. Who are the other two? Um, the other two are Ray Bradbury and Philip agree. K. Dick. I would agree with those. So. Take you take that, Whitney. <laughs> I love I mean, them both. Up until I read Ubik, I'm just saying. Uh, I. So here are some of the greats, <laughs> in my opinion. Ray Bradbury, for one. I mean, he's in my top. He is in my top three authors of all time. I love him. Now, he didn't just write science fiction, of course. Um, he kind of was all... It's kind of like Octavia Butler. It's kind of the same thing I liked about Octavia Butler. She was kind of all over the place. But, um, man, I think The Martian Chronicles is a masterpiece. I really do. I thought it really petered out at the end. I don't know why, but the end really lost me. Um, Philip K. Dick. I just... I, I love him a lot. 
despite myself. I probably shouldn't, but I, I love him. Um, Jeff Vandermeer, I think, uh, is, is probably the best science fiction writer living today. At least what I've seen so far. I haven't read like Alistair Reynolds or Adrian Tchaikovsky yet, so I've, I've heard some people say it. But just in terms of the strangeness and uniqueness of his vision, I think Jeff Vandermeer is, is up there. Should be. I don't see a lot of people talk about him. And it makes me sad, because I think he's a phenomenal writer. Well, unless you're Thomas. Thomas, he, he's one of the chosen people, I'll say. Even, even, even if he's wrong about Stranger in a Strange Land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I think um, Jeff Vandermeer has talked about a lot. I think I think it's just a really unique aspect of science fiction, though, because it's not even in space. It's kind of in the future, but it's kind of not really first contact. But it's I mean, it's it's a very unique little avenue that he has created for himself, kind of like Philip K. Dick, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, New Weird were kind of I, I would say they were ripping him off, but they kind of weren't because they were doing their thing. And it's it's funny because Phil K. Dick was doing it first. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I think that J.G. Ballard should be up there. I think um, High Rise is a phenomenal piece of speculative fiction. Um, that's another. You one would I probably would really, really enjoy John Brunner. If you like J.G. Ballard, you would probably really like John Brunner yeah, too. Yeah, he's on my list. He's on my he's on mm -hmm. my eyeballs list um, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, who else? Um, I liked Jim M. John Harrison's uh, mm -hmm. Light a lot. I thought that was a really, mm -hmm. I thought that was really strong. Can't wait to read the second one because it has a weird zone, which you know I just love that. Um, who else? I mean, I I just um I would say China Mieville, but I wasn't really hot on embassy town i think Purdue oh, street station unforgivable wonderful. unforgivable how were you not hot on embassy town you are a journalism person come on the words i know i know there's I, so I, much I, psychology in that book how could you not like it i think i just read it at the wrong time i i want to read it again to see if i if my mind changes but i was just kind of like mm. but you know um and it was it was like it, it looked like a book that would you know get me going but you know uh, I, a lot of people call Perdido Street Station science fiction. It, it's a fantasy. I mean, it's in a secondary world. So I mean, I haven't read it yet. It's on my list. Oh, this it's year. phenomenal! It's a phenomenal book. Scar mm -hmm. is very good too, though it's more of a fantasy adventure. Um, I, I, uh, but I think that now who else? Um, well, I would say Heinlein. I really mm -hmm. love Heinlein a lot. I think he gets overhated on. Because of, um, well, to be fair, I haven't read any of his um, books he did before he died. Because um, a lot of those just sound icky. <laughs> but I think books like Starship Troopers and Moon is a Harsh Mistress are phenomenal. I think people should go read them as soon as possible. Like If you want like a, hmm, what's a good like one you should read before you die? Like, oh, man, I have... I have been thinking about making that video for ages, and the problem is it's just an endless list. It's just know, it's just like yeah, endless. I know. It's endless. Um, I I really think that I would agree with you. I think China Mieville is a book that everyone like is an author. Everyone should at least pick <laughs> one book from and read before you die. Um, I don't care which one it is. You just pick one. Yeah, I I, I um, think I think he's great. He's I I cool. would also say that I think. Um, Isaac Asimov really had a lot of really good books that I think get underhyped, which is surprising because I know everybody talks about all of his ideas, but I don't think he was as bad of a writer as everybody. H.G. Wells. Forgot yep. about him. He was a childhood favorite of mine. I think, I mean, a lot of his stuff would probably be kind of viewed as outdated nowadays, but The Time Machine and Invisible Man are fantastic stories. Hmm. Invisible Man was terrible. What? Yeah, dude, what did he do? He's like, hey, I have invisibility. You know what I'm going to do with it? I'm going to try to check out of this hotel. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. We're not going to have a discussion about society or what I could do with it. We're not going to talk about morality. We're going to check out of this hotel. That's it. That's all. That's it. Well, he was in the hotel because he was... 
he was conducting his experiments in the hotel. But the <laughs> missed opportunity of the things he could have talked about were like you could drown in them. And all he did was um, check out of the hotel. That's it. That's all he wanted. Um, what's another? Um, I mean, he did World of War, eh, War of the Worlds, but that feels like a journalist. Uh, it feels like a newspaper article. So I'm just like, eh. Um, the Time Machine, though, and the Invisible Man. I, I, now again, maybe some childhood fondness creeping in there. But I love those. I love those stories a lot, especially the Time Machine. Let's see. I also really enjoyed uh, Robert Silverberg's Down Down to Earth, Downward to the Earth. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard Silverberg's good. Um, oh, how did I forget Harlan Ellison? Um, phenomenal. I think a very underrated writer. Um, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream is one of the most disturbing I would agree with you. It is very disturbing. stories I've ever read. And I, uh, a boy and his dog is not very far behind. So I, I'm I, a sucker um, for both books. I have not been able to get a hold of a boy and his dog. How did you get a hold of it? I I scoured around. <laughs> you can't even you can't even buy it. Like it's nowhere I to be found. I pirated a lot of stuff back in the day. Would you be willing to send it to me? Maybe I, I don't know where I would find it, but oh. um. I don't know where I would find it now, but um, I think that also the movie's pretty good too. Um, but yeah, Harlan Ellison. I um, I, I want to read more of his stories, but I think now I, he would probably get pissed off at me for calling him a science fiction writer because he was one of those guys who says, "Oh, it's speculative fiction," but you know, fuck whatever you say. He's dead, so fuck him. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Um, well, if you want to go there with p authors who are upset that they're science fiction writers, even though they are, let's talk about Margaret Atwood. Oh, God. Um, Orcs and, that reminds me. Orcs and Crake is a fantastic book. So is Handmaid's Tale. Pretty much all of the things that she wrote were really interesting thought experiments. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've only read The Handmaid's Tale and Orcs and Crake, and I really liked Orcs and Crake a lot. And Handmaid's Tale, I want to reread that again, because um, I, I, I didn't like it when I read it the first time. Much to the shock of many of my friends. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut as well. I don't care what the academia says. He's a science fiction writer. Slaughterhouse-Five is a science fiction novel. Sadly. Sadly? What does that mean? You don't like it? I hated it. What? Yeah. What? I I love Kurt Vonnegut as a person, and some of his YouTube talks are so funny and witty and interesting and funny, and <laughs> his books, I've read Sirens of Titan, and I've read Slaughterhouse-Five, and I just don't connect to his characters. I just didn't like them. I was bored halfway through. I had to push myself through those. I just... I guess I'm not his intended audience. I guess not, because I, th I what I do remember from Slaughterhouse Five is it was a really great take on trauma, but I'll have to I'll have to read it again at some point. Uh, but it's a yeah, it's a great. I, I thought that was a great book. Um, but yeah, then that's that's about it as far as I as far as I I got. Um. Yeah, but I think that. But I think it's I think it's interesting. I, I like um. Well, haven't you read Jeff Vandermeer? Didn't, didn't you, you read Born? Didn't you? I, I read that's, Born. That's my I favorite actually, book from him. It is your favorite or not? It is my favorite from him. Okay. Though yeah, the climax I, is a little gets a little bit on the like kaiju stuff. Phenomenal, phenomenal book. Mm -hmm. Might be my favorite science fiction book of well for a while for a while also i think southern reach is worth the read as well yeah i actually own the first book annihilation and it's pretty short um i have no excuses i definitely plan to get on it soon yeah my buddy jason for my birthday gave me the whole trilogy because i hadn't owned it before now so thank you jason 
It was also on the yep. first episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, I, uh, this is also a good opportunity for me to rant about uh, guys. Jeff Vandermeer, check him out. You frauds. No, I'm kidding. Um, though again, Thomas, he's one of the chosen people. He's a big fan of Jeff Vandermeer. So I appreciate that. I really want to read The Strange after I saw his video. Um, I actually finished The Strange because of Thomas. Um, it was a really fantastic space western, which I did not expect. And the one thing I can rant about is it is marketed as a horror, and it was not a horror. You know, that actually that actually leads me to my next question, which don't worry, it's not another favorite. This is... This is stuff that annoys you, so feel free to rant if you want. But do you have any worries about where the science fiction genre is headed? Are there gripes that you have with the genre that you would like to see improved? Now, um, I, I know you made a video called Tropes in Science Fiction that annoy you, which I thought was very entertaining. But um, I'll, I'll let you talk now. I've been, been jabbering on. Um, <laughs> wow, that's that's such a loaded question. Um. So things that annoy me or things that I would improve about it. Um, well, you know, I'm not in charge of the science fiction genre, which well, is I know, know it's, all, it's all about the opinions here. I'm not. Um, so one of the things that I think is one of my biggest pet peeves in general of reading as well as science fiction, although I will admit it's not just science fiction that has this problem. Okay. Okay. But, um, one of my, I, I'm going to have two now that I'm talking here, but the first one is poor marketing, like in The Strange oh or gosh, other places. thank you. I was about to say the marketing. The where marketing. a lot of times they will, they compare books to certain other really popular novels, and then they create these expectations that if they hadn't been marketed that way, or you hadn't gone into the book expecting a certain thing, you probably would have liked the book, but because you were expecting something else, it, it was a disappointment. And I have a hard time getting over that disappointing feeling that the book left me with because of the expectation that the marketing created. Yeah. So I will say that's, that's one of that's my big That's what I was saying needs. earlier. The marketing yeah. is yeah. so... It's a problem. Like, oh my gosh. That... Um... Sometimes I wonder if the marketers even read the book. <laughs> did you read this? Did, did you actually look at it? Um, another one that I have is um, specifically Philip K. Dick, but many other authors as well. <laughs> I'm going to say um, loss of potential. Like some of these authors I know what you have mean. really I know what you mean. incredible ideas. And then they just don't do they don't do the story to the full extent. They get really scared to kind of go deep dive and you can tell they're about going to, and then they're like, no, too scared. Just kidding. Okay. I will also say another hot take besides just Philip K. Dick, who does that. John Scalzi. Oh, I haven't read. I've, you know, it's interesting. I've read his blog because I have a friend of mine. His name's Alan who loves his blog and he has given me blog, but, He's he's very he's a very smart guy. Like very He's a sharp. smart guy and he's a good writer and there's so many things that he has that you can tell he could have gone in a direction and then he's like nope nope too scared. And every book is like that where he could have should have would have deep dived into topics and then he doesn't. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely another that's that's kind of another that, that's interesting you put it in those words cuz um I've also noticed that kind of loss of potential. Well, because I don't know if it's like due to some of it's due to I've seen some of it. Asimov the, do it, and um, I I haven't noticed tons that Asimov has done it because he really generated a lot of his own ideas and he really deep dived into a lot of them. But I think, especially recently, there's a lot of them that just didn't go deep enough, and it was a great idea and a great story, and they just needed to go just a little bit deeper with it, and it would have been perfect. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that um, it's kind of fru- I, I find it frustrating that a lot of science fiction writers struggle with, well, like I said, sort of combining that human psychological element with 
the big ideas. So that's that, that's always frustrated me about. So that's one of my gripes. I, I wish that people would find the the marriage more. Because I said in my Dune review not too long ago that um <laughs> you check that out um that a story's ideas aren't as powerful if there's not characters who are affected by it. If the characters don't have life, <coughs> at least in my opinion, um, I find the ideas don't cut it as well. But then again, that you know, you, you could deconstruct that. Um, there's certainly I have examples where that's untrue. I think they just did it wrong. Oh, okay, what are, what are your examples? I think one of the examples is that book that I mentioned earlier. I think that... Um, Kim Stanley Robinson's Ministry for the Future was all ideas, no characters, and yet it's a very popular, very interesting, very thought-provoking book. I would also say the same must be true about The Three-Body Problem, and even though people gripe about it, it is a huge bestseller, and it has its own TV show. So there's there's got to be something to the just the ideas alone, even if you're even if you're not a perfect writer, right? Even if you can't get all of the elements of that story and you can't hit the jackpot or you can't, you know, have your cake and eat it too, there's still worth in exploring those ideas. Well, no, I mean, I think it's a similar thing with like Foundation, which while I haven't read it, like I said, I'm pretty familiar with it, um, what it is as a concept. But um, I, I think the ideas stand very well. But I find the character, or well, the sort of flat characterization uh, I, I won't say it drags it down you you can't say that because you haven't even read it oh yeah <laughs> you don't even know yeah that's i guess that's true i'm i'm, I'm sorry i'm going in the book reviewer mode <laughs> yeah you, you can't remove it if you haven't read it you cannot that's true that's true um another example of this well dune i have actually read dune now, mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know what um i don't know what you think about dune what, what do you think about dune do you, do, you, do you even think that Dune is science fiction? That's that's a that's a question. I, I mean, it's ask. definitely science fantasy. I mean, let's be real. Spice is magic, just like the Force, right? Oh my um, god! Yeah, I was about to say. Oh my gosh! There he was loopholing. Well, Clark's I third actually, law. I think that's okay. <laughs> no, 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 I no, no, no. it's okay. I'm not. A, I'm not a genre Nazi. I'm just, you know, yeah. I just think it's kind of funny, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think that that it gives it an interesting edge because one of the reasons why it held up so long. Um, is just because it didn't have that element of technology to go wrong. So he didn't have to predict what technology would look like in the future. Instead, he got to use things that were happening in the Middle East to base his story off of. I mean, there are so many things about Islam that are in that book. And there's so many things about the Middle East that are in that book. I mean, clearly. But... Um, yeah, I mean, I actually really liked Dune. It's not in my top 10 books of all time. It's probably not even in my top 20. I know it's oh, scary it's, things. Oh, oh, it's not even in my like top. It's not even my top 20. Like it's. But but I will say that I did enjoy the book and I did like the movies. Um, Still need to and see the I, second one. I I I think that the second one is not going to hold up very well over time. I actually think that the second one made some really weird choices focused on de-emphasizing a lot of the climaxes that were in the book and actually made them less impactful in the movie. Why did he do that? I have absolutely no idea. Uh, I mean, I guess my issues with Dune were I really like what Herbert was going for in that story. He's talking a lot about power and how corrupt how it corrupts people i i really identify with that but for one i feel like he never confront well okay i've heard he does do it in dune messiah i haven't read dune messiah because i thought you know because i was kind of lukewarm on dune but i felt like again i just felt like the the i felt if the characterization was stronger i think it would be more effective at least to me i know there's people who well, like that stuff so i guess I like one it. of my questions for you then would be so i read dune messiah 
I have not yet read Children of Dune. I do plan to do that this year. But um, where was the weakness in Paul's character? Like what kind of character, what do you mean when you say his characterization wasn't strong enough? Where was he flat? A lot of it was his tendency to over I'll, I'll put it this way. Maybe maybe I put it wrong when I said uh, flat character. The lack of subtext is what I didn't like. What? That whole book is nothing but subtext. He's basically explaining what they're all thinking. Like, there's no tension. I mean, but there's tons of subtext about our people shackled to their own fates what happens when the messiah is born out of order i mean like oh my gosh i could write essays and essays hey, on order this did you say a hoarder out of order oh out, out of, of order, order. Okay. right Sorry. um there's also like the really interesting dynamic between the female Bene jesuits who are like the mystical magical religious aspect with the um mentats who are the men who are taking the place of computers and yes. how the, that has a dynamic and that's tons of subtext. Plus then we have the whole like politics between the emperor and Arrakis and then the Harkonnen thing and how Harkonnens could essentially be what mankind is without discipline. They are very carnal. They're very um, like all in. They're only, they're all angry. They're all like, they have nothing but emotion. Whereas the Bene Gesserits are trying to teach Paul things like um self-discipline and handling your own emotion oh my gosh i could write essays on this are you serious <laughs> well i mean the dude who betrays paul is like oh i'm gonna do this i know he's probably gonna betray me but i'm gonna do it anyway um yeah, but I was hope the story that really it's... about that or was it about something else well i mean i i was just i was just pointing that out as an example it was just a choice he made i didn't really like i was just kind of like eh. like again it just feels kind of you don't have to explain everything. I don't think he did. But I agree with you as far as like the superficial story was very, I don't know, Roman maybe? Roman? Yeah. Like, you know, it's a whole bunch of royal houses who get betrayed well, fighting for power. Thrones, so it's not like I'm, a, I'm like against that. <laughs> That's what that whole series is about, like, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. but I don't know. It's, yeah. Maybe it's maybe it's going back to my complaint about people not taking older books at its level. Maybe I'm suffering from that as well, but um, I don't know. just wasn't... I, well, okay, I guess they're... Hmm. Again, I have to, I have to collect my thoughts about Dune a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> We should have more talks I'm, about Dune. I'm spit firing here. It's it's been a minute since I read Dune in 2020. Okay, it's it's been four years. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's you know I I think that if he had, mm, yeah, it was it, it just felt it, it just felt a little over explained at times. I guess, and it's just one of them. I, mm -hmm. I feel. I, I, I think. Okay. I don't know. Now, I mean, I, I know we're different people. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's kind of, it's interesting because, you know, I, I, I did want to like Dune. It's just, you know, it was, there's some stuff that really wasn't hit. You know, well, I, I do think that, um, again, each reader brings something new to the table when they open a book. Uh, life experiences, that kind of stuff, what you've already read previously, that kind of thing. Um, I found myself to be in, in certain books, I enjoy the book more if I have somebody who reads it with me um, as like a buddy read or somebody who discusses it with me as I go along. And the more that that conversation generates discussion, the more I tend to remember and enjoy the book. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll read Dune again at some point, except I, I wish I were kidding when I said this, but my dog literally chewed up my copy, so I had to get rid of it because, you know, I didn't want to. Well, good news is I think that there's going to be copies just floating around now that the movies are out, so. 
Yeah, I mean, it, and um, but yeah, going back to what we were talking about, I think I I do agree with you that I wish that that's the the word I was looking for was symmetry. I wish there was more of that symmetry huh. of, between emotion. Well, maybe not emotion is the wrong term. Um, more balance. Psychology, the psychology <laughs> and the ideas. I th- you mm-hmm. know I find when books when science fiction books do i feel like that's the golden zone <laughs> i mm-hmm. felt like dune was trying to do that but um I, I i don't know if uh herbert was good enough to really pull that off but that i mean you know i don't know <laughs> did, did did you were you gonna say something no, I mean, I think you know how I feel about it. I think you like Dune, so I liked Dune. I think that he had a lot of psychology in the book. I think there's a lot of stuff, especially in Dune Messiah, that he goes into explaining things. Um, I, I guess, I thought that there was an equal part plot to psychology. I think the thing for me that did not do well is. Um, I just didn't connect with the characters the way that I have in other books. It didn't stick with me as long as so, I wanted so it to. So we basically that agree kind of... on that. <laughs> so yeah. we kind of agree on that. It's just we're kind of... Yeah, it's missing some kind of X factor, and I'm not exactly sure what it is. And it seems to work for a lot of people, and I'm sad it didn't work for me. But to each their own, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, I mean, not every classic science fiction book has done it for me. I mean, um... I mean, you know, Embassy Town is... I don't know if that's a classic just yet, but that one didn't really... And again, I, I don't know if I was... I'll admit, I wasn't really in the best head... Or not best head space, because I wasn't, like, sad or anything, but I was just... I was going... I was, there was a lot going on at that point, and I didn't... I, I felt like I didn't have the patience. Yeah, I found myself doing better if as i'm reading a book and i realize i'm just not able to pay attention i just put it down because otherwise i'll end up hating it and it's not the book's fault it's just because i'm in the wrong place at the wrong time so i might reread embassy town at some point um yeah that one was kind of and well the handmaid's tell i didn't really love at the well again this it's been a long time since i read it so i want to read it again but I remember just thinking, like, this just feels kind of, eh. Like, I guess I was at a, a more idealistic part where I thought that might that that couldn't possibly happen. But then again, I've seen, I've seen a, uh, I've seen some of our current events recently. I'm like, well, maybe it wasn't as absurd as I initially thought. Yeah, I I don't know. Oh, uh, the, the, what is it? That Dave Eggers book, The Circle. Hated that book. Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't read that one. You're not missing much. It's the most literary author, has no freaking clue what science fiction is, starts writing science fiction, and it's the most banal, seen it before commentary you'll ever see. So you're not missing much. Mm. Also another gripe, um... You know, you mentioned earlier people aren't dealing with, aren't playing with those ideas more effectively. You know what? YA, there's not a lot of great, that I've read anyway, there might be some great YA science fiction. I, I haven't seen it yet. But um, Divergent, that was another series where I felt like, man, that's a great idea you have there. And you just completely blew it, you know? But you know. Yeah, I, I would say that the end books were definitely a little bit lost potential, but um, I don't know. I There are some really good sci- YA science fiction books out there. The hard part is that you're not going to be the target audience because as you continue to age out, it's going to be harder and harder to find those. Although I will say, I'm going to go ahead and put forth Neil Schusterman's Scythe series. I think that one was a really cool idea. Yeah, I think I saw Mike talking about that. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's, it's well worth it. I was super thrilled to see that he read it. I disagree, though. I think that as the series continued to progress, I liked it. 
um, because it started getting into more exciting topics for me as a sci-fi reader, things like AI and uh, that kind I of love stuff. AI. And he kind of started not liking it at that point. So I, I do love some AI. I mean, um, well, 2001 A Space Odyssey is one of my favorite science fiction movies of all time. I haven't actually read the book. but uh, See, we are very opposite. Really? Really? Have you, yeah. Or, well, have you read 2001 Space Odyssey book? Is, I have good? not. I have not read the book. And I will admit I need to do that before I fully say I wish I... I would rather rip my eyes out than watch that movie again. <laughs> I, well, you know, you were going back to Stalker. I think what makes Stalker effective, even though it's a very slow film, and it's not a movie you watch casually. That's one you turn everything off that you have. You don't have your phone. You don't have your watch. You don't have anything that will distract you. You sit down. You watch the damn thing. Um, well, and that could have been my problem. I, 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 I did that... watch it when I was busy. I, and I, I feel that with Roadside Picnic, you were mentioning earlier, and you might feel differently. And I think Roadside Picnic is very good for what it is, but I think that Stalker took such an interesting direction with that idea because it's not really about how... Because the book is more about how the people react to this thing. The movie is about how desire, how your desire, what you want, how what that reflects back on you. I found that really fascinating. I don't know. I think the ending of Roadside Picnic does the same thing. Yeah. Th I, yeah, there, there's a lot of... Well, there's angst in the film, too. Russians are very angsty. They are very angsty. I do have to say, if you do <laughs> like that kind of story, um, <laughs> Metro 2033. Yeah, I've, I, I know those were video games, and I've seen the books around. I haven't, I haven't read them yet. I, I'll, uh, I'll have to pick them up. They they seemed very similar to the vibe of like I feel like Russian sci-fi has a vibe. Yeah. And it is that vibe. Hey, Russia's <laughs> been through a lot of shit. I mean, have you yeah. read about Russian? Hit? They have gone through some stuff. Okay, they they have a yeah. right to be angsty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you know it's it's um. I I, I suppose um. I just found that really fascinating about Stalker. And, and also I find Southern Reach plays with, well, not really that concept of desire, but also it's more about, well, that book's more about curio our curiosity and also how we exploit things or how we rush into things without fully understanding what's going on. Because, you know, human, I think there's a lot of great science fiction about that as well. So there you go. I'm telling you, you got to pick up Forever War. Forever War is all about that? Yep. I'll have to, I'll have to check that out. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know. I, I feel like a bad science fiction fan now. <laughs> Don't. It's, uh, it's not I'm, about how many books you've read. There's always a million books. I mean, there's a million that I haven't read either. So. I mean, there's so many. I mean, God, Brian Aldiss. You mentioned John, uh, is it Bruner or Brunner? Brunner. John Brunner. Brunner. Mm -hmm. John Brunner. Roger Zelazny. Um... Ursula Ooh. K. Le Guin is really mm -hmm. high up on that list. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to read more of Michael Moorcock's science fiction as well, but you know, whatever. I don't know if you've read Michael Moorcock, but um, I have not. I have not read anything by him, and that is uh, definitely a list of shame situation. Um, I want to read more J.G. Ballard. You know, it's 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 crazy, and that's the nice thing about science fiction. There is a lot of it. Now, will it all? Is it all going to be good? Don't know, but there's a lot of it out there. Yeah. So. Well, I, I do have to say, you might really enjoy Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Yeah, I've been wanting to check that out. It, it, it seems like one I would like. Um, that one is on my top ten books, best books of all time. Yeah, Stanislaus uh, Lim as well. I want to mm -hmm. read more of the Strigotsky brothers. Yep. I've heard Hard to Be a God is really good. Yeah, I, I was able to get a hold of Doomed City, so that's going to be my next uh, Strigotsky read. Um, some of their books are really hard to get a hold of. Yeah, it's because it's Russian, and 
It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. And oh, they, they still, I mean, we're not in the Cold War anymore, but there's this, you can tell they don't really like us very much. <laughs> they still don't really like us. Well, the Americans are almost always the bad guy, but I feel like that's fine because in our books, the Russians are always the bad guy. So it's, yeah, a, it's, it's fair. fair. It's, it's fair. fair. Um, I, I guess, well, this is kind of a two part question. I and mean, I guess we already kind of went through this, but. Um, I mean, you've read a lot of science fiction, but are there, like, on your list of, like, man, I've always wanted to read it, but I haven't yet, um, are there books you would like to read in the future that you haven't, like, popular books you haven't read yet, you know? Oh, there's so many. So many. And you can um, name a couple if you want. Sure. Um, you know, I, I always make on my channel a list of books uh, that's the same number as the year. So I have 24 books for 2024, right? And <laughs> oh, I, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I always have those lists um, because I want people to know what it is I'm interested in reading. Um, I would say one of the big ones, I guess one of the big ones right now that um, I am a huge Adrian Tchaikovsky fan and I haven't read any of the Final Architect series so that's a, a pile of shame thing. It starts with Shards of the Earth. Um, I definitely want to read more. I, I, I'm currently going to start uh, Forever War. I'm like, I don't know, like two chapters in. That's definitely been on my list for a long time. So has The City in the City by China Mieville. I need to reread that, but I remember really enjoying it. That one's yeah. weird as hell, though. I mean, all of his stuff. That's true. Um, all of his stuff. I, but that one, I, I still don't entirely understand what the concept of the book is. So there you go. I, I, I think that's fair. Um, <laughs> one, one of the most classic sci-fi books that I feel like is one that people are like, what, you haven't read that? That I really need to get to is Contact by Carl Sagan. Haven't read it. Haven't, have not. It's very list of shame mm. oh i won't say much on that <laughs> oh sounds like not a fan huh i love carl sagan i really do contact is not one of his brightest moments though but you know well, it's, it's like a three star for me but whatever oh. if i still did star ratings well i feel like i have to because it's just one of those books that like as a sci-fi fan you have to have at least read yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. I've got, I'm, I've, I'm, like I mentioned, like Le Guin, Aldous, uh, Stanislaw, mm -hmm. Stanislaw Lim. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I want to read more of Octavia Butler because Kindred cracked my head open. I have Parable of the Sower over there. I haven't, I haven't read that yet. Um, Thomas Dish. I want to read him. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's so many. So many. I, Alistair you know, Reynolds, one of, you know, yeah, yep. Yeah. I actually just finished um a book by him called Pushing Ice. It's a standalone. James Blish as well. But mm -hmm. anyway, you were saying about Al or were you talking about Alistair Reynolds? Yeah, I I just said I finished uh, Pushing Ice by him. It was pretty good. For Chasm City, is pretty good from him and uh, Revelation Space. Yep, I haven't read those, so I wouldn't know. Revelation Space is a series, though, so I, I tend to get a little leery of him if I don't know if I'm going to like the author or not. Uh, we may, we um, may need to buddy read something at some point. <laughs> like, uh, you should uh, like you should text me and be like, Britain, we got to buddy read a science fiction book. Be like, like, go buy this book right now. We're going to read this. <laughs> All right. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> well, um, another one that you need to add to your list at some future point um is greg bear i do have the city at the end of time which i i hate to say this because it's gonna make me sound like uh just uh, i bought it because i thought the title was really cool that's um, totally acceptable I've, it's also acceptable um, if the cover was pretty that's absolutely okay <laughs> like i wanna i wanna know like i wanna know what that's about you know Ugh. Well, I um I recently read his I, I read Blood Music, which was um a big influence, by the way, on Jeff Vandermeer. Um Jeff did a bunch of articles talking about it. PS. It is oh, very John, weird. John Windham as well, speaking of that. 
because he did a John Wyndham. Yeah. Oh, he is he is that underrated classic author. High. I've seen they re-released his books. Jeff Vandermeer was one of the four words. So I'm like, I'm gonna check that out. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna Some shot. not all of his books are equal though. I must say some of them are less than great. I mean, kind of like any author, right? Well, yeah. Even Philip K. Dick had his stinkers. Much as I love. Oh, him. for sure. It's for pretty sure. rare for uh, an author to not miss at least once. Yeah. Ray yeah. Bradbury, man. <laughs> I just yeah. love Bradbury too, but ah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would say that Wyndham. I I'm Day not of the sure. Tri- if is, is it Triffids or Trifids? Day of the Triffids. Yeah. Is that worth a read? I've been. I've been out I I long. actually I read it recently, and oh. um, it the I liked it. However, because it was written back in the, t- the day, it's going to have a lot of the tropes because it started a lot of them, if that oh, makes okay. sense. So it will sound very familiar, but it was the initial um, impetus or inspiration for The Last of Us TV show. As well as a lot of zombie I fiction. I love The Last of Us, so you, you've, you've enticed me, let's say. But... I, I will say it's gonna, it's way different. I mean, it's just got certain elements. Well, I, are... I imagine mm-hmm. it's not like you've enticed me. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. I, I do think it's worth a read. I think I, I can't tell your tastes if you'll like it or not, but I hope you do. I know it's so fickle. I'm disgusting. <laughs> oh, don't say that. Don't say that. Uh, we're, we're all fickle. That's, I know, I know. that's our beauty. Come on. Um, I, I want to, you know, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> what's a what's another one? I want to read more like MJ. I want to read more. I want to read the other. Um, I think it's pronounced Kafuchi tract, but uh, M. John Harrison stuff. I want to read more of that. Yeah, I I have not read any M. John Harrison stuff. I need. I have. One of the things that I'm trying to do um, is I'm trying to work my way through the books that I already have on my shelf yeah. rather than buying more. So I'm I'm trying to go shopping on my shelf rather than I'm an I'm an addict, Whitney. I can't help myself. I know, I know. I haven't seen your library. Are you ever going to do a library tour? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna have to at some point. I mean, you know, there. I don't know if you can see them, but I have a stack of books over there. Stack mm-hmm. right here, stack right there. Um, Hyperion, I'm gonna ch- um, That's one of my. I'm gonna do that in 2024. If it's the last damn thing I do, it's one of them. Is well, Hyperion. I think I I don't think you'll be sad. I hope you'll love it. I I'll, I'll really get you on and I'll interrogate you about it if I when, I, right. when if or when I finish it. All right, that sounds awesome. Um, but um. Yeah. One of my one of my big like books of shame reads that I haven't read um, that I keep looking at and then walking away from Pandora's Star by Peter Hamilton. Oh yeah, I forgot about Peter Hamilton. I need to check him out too. Another yeah. trope I, I heard one of his books is kind of like Alien, and I freaking love Alien. So I don't know. I haven't I haven't read any of his stuff other than a short novella. So oh, didn't he do that? Uh... No, I think that was someone else. Well, let me look. The short story based on the thing. He did that story. No, that was Peter Watts. Never mind. Uh, Peter Watts oh, yeah. is another one. Are you talking about Blind Sight? Um, no, he did a short story based on The Thing, which is my favorite horror film of all time. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Uh, who who goes there? Yeah, no, that... um. Yeah, that's yeah, interesting. That was that was a uh, Campbell, wasn't it? Yeah, no, that was Campbell. Mm-hmm. He wrote another one based on the movie. It's really oh oh, I see. Really, really well done. Mm-hmm. I, I liked it. Um, I I got a stack of books right here that I could just read titles from, but like, <laughs> I one of my more recent ones that I want to get to soon is the Quantum Thief by Ooh, um, yeah that guy I've, i can't pronounce the guy's name unfortunately yeah but, hanu raja um, something one of my one of my favorite writers um warren ellis well before he got disgraced but warren another uh science fiction great i think it gets underappreciated because he does comics but great writer nonetheless um <laughs> uh yeah that he really he liked 
one of the books from that guy. Hmm. I don't know if it's a quantum. I think it's the one he did before Quantum Thief. I, I don't. I'm not very. Who is it? I think it was called Summerland. Oh, I don't know. I am. I am not familiar with his stuff. Um, I do know that a recent book came out called Hope Land. That, but it's a different author, so I haven't heard of that. Oh, okay. Uh yeah. Um, oh yeah, and Terra Ignata. I want to read that. My friend Raph was telling me about it. Yeah, that's a good one. I've read the first book. Haven't read any more, but I do need to continue that series. I keep putting it off because it's one of the those series that I'm sure I'm gonna love. So, um, all right. Last question here, and we kind of already touched on a little bit. Um, I don't want to fry your brain too much, so just think of some that'll pop to your mind first thing. So, what is a science fiction book or books that people should read before they die? The Foundation Trilogy. Okay, you're calling me out. I hear that. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> iRobot is on there for me, for sure. Oh, hey, stop that. Um, I don't know. Um, nineteen eighty four or Brave New World. Damn it! I forgot. I, I was gonna mention those two. I love those mm -hmm. two. But I think, though, I think Brave New World is uh, one of my hot takes. Is I think Brave New World is scarier than nineteen eighty four. Oh, I don't think that's a hot take. I think that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> um. Love those two books, though. Yeah, I would agree with those. I, yeah, I, I would say those those books. I would say the Foundation trilogy. Um, I don't know. I'd have to think on that one a little bit harder. What else you got? Um, well, I mean, I've been harping on the Martian Chronicles, so I'll just throw that out there. Um, the Time Machine by H.G. Wells. Uh. Ooh, I'm going to add to my list. This is going to be a hot take, too. The Martian by Andy Weir. Ooh, yeah, that's, that might that might ruffle some feathers, because I know there's a, um, I like that book, though. I like it. I mean, I don't think it's a, I, I don't think it's a Vandermeer level of, like, great, but, um, and it's not well, trying think... to be, to be fair, before you, you know, before anyone right. goes, like, he's not doing that, but, um. Well, I, I think that that book has a lot of merit in understanding, like, survival and the rigors of space and the importance of things like science and I, I feel like that's a book that people should read in the masses before they die yeah i mean i think it's a, i think it's a very good science fiction novel i haven't read project hell mary yet oh man you are in for a treat i love that book um i mean i i hope it'll i hope it'll be as good as advertised. I mean, as, um, also the er, the Expanse is another one I want to read. I want to see what that's about. Um, uh, I would say a Scanner Darkly if one should read one Philip K. Or either that or um, do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep. See, I'm going to say no to both of those. I'm going to say definitely Ubik. Don't read anything else. <laughs> I, do wonder, I, I do have Ubik over there. I'm going to definitely, I'm going to read it. Hopefully in May. Okay. And I'll tell you what I think of it. I'm probably gonna love gonna, it because I'm already I, a, I'm already a, a fan of I, it. it. It is his most perfect work. I, I mean, I so am a, far. I am a dick writer. To if I if I if you don't mind the pun. You're a dickhead. <laughs> you mean? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh man, there's so many I could throw. That's the thing about asking that question because like I can't just yeah. choose one. I know it's really hard. I mean, I've been. Right. Is this the books I Do you have more questions, or you you want us to keep going with that list? I'll just keep going. Or well, you know, I I think that's um, I think that's all I have for this evening, because also my parents just got home and we have to eat soon. But Whitney, I'm glad we managed to make this work. Cause there were some times I'm like I might have to postpone this till April, and that would have been fine. But I'm glad we managed to get together today. <laughs> yeah yeah sorry about the scheduling difficulties and you know <laughs> life is a life is a funny thing i get it you know um 
But um, hey, if anyone wants to come on the show, I am not against having people. I mean, I have a list of people I want to have on, but if any like sci-fi channels are like, hey, this kid knows what he's talking about, or maybe think I'm an idiot and I should read more, let me know in the comments. But I won't keep you for too much longer, Whitney. Um, if you want to shill your stuff real quick, feel free. Oh, well, come check us out on Secret Sauce of Storycraft. We are currently doing a buddy read of Forever War starting in April um, on the Discord. So, Britain, if you want to have discussions as you read, that might be something fun that you could come check out and do. Mm -hmm. That sounds appealing. We're also doing The City in the City later this year, Ooh. as well as... I've been wanting to reread that. Could I, you think I could join in on that? I mean, anyone's welcome. It's free. <laughs> um, you have and a then, Discord as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. That's Discord is a good place to be. So, I um, uh, I hope all my subscribers haven't given up on me yet. I've had a little bit of a rough month, and I haven't had a great time with consistency this month. So. Yeah, I know. I looked at your channel, and the last thing you posted was two weeks ago. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, that's not too bad. Yeah. So. Well, you know. It's it, it was also like one of my biggest tanking videos of all time. Oops. Well, I mean, I always feel bad when I harass people who come on my shows where I talk about my angst about stuff. But Whitney, thank you for humoring, humoring me and coming on here and also turning my attention to other sci-fi books I should be checking out. Anytime. So, yeah. If you, uh, if you get bored and don't know what to read, you can always message me. <laughs> Uh, all right. Until next time, this has been the State of Science Fiction. Till next month. Yeah. <laughs> oh.